I'd like to welcome you uh, to our hearing. <clears throat> thank you very much, Mr. Warren. Please proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and the committee. I'm fortunate to act in a few movies. I don't really consider myself an actor, but I'm in movies. And that's when they need a big Indian, they give me a call. And uh, <laughs> I've never been asked to audition as a professor at uh, the university, uh, an educator, an administrator, doctor, lawyer. What do you think my roles are that I audition for? It's the big bad guy, right? Uh, one of my roles was literally Big Indian. They didn't even bother giving me a name. And uh, so, again, that's some of the media misrepresentation. And, of course, people go, why do you do those roles? Because I would never have acted and gotten an opportunity to infiltrate the Hollywood system, is what I say, is for the next generation of actors will have a better experience than I did in terms of those stereotypes. One thing about Twilight is that it has opened a lot of doors. The people before me, you know, the Graham Greens, Jim here, uh, Rodney Grant, they had to struggle. There's been other media changes, as you see in my written testimony. I added some pictures of old advertising that were insulting to Asian Americans, African Americans, and Hispanic and Latino Americans. I remember being at a football game at San Diego State as a spectator with my son, Ryan. And uh, he was about seven years old at the time, and then the, at the time the Aztec mascot was still part of the university. And he came running by in his outfit and blowing his uh, conch shell, and he goes, Dad, there's an Aztec. And I go, no, son, that's a white guy doing a very bad job of imitating an Aztec. And, uh, you know, it was an interesting dichotomy to, in, in that sense of sitting there, you know, wanting to be a fan, but then, again, explaining some of the cultural inappropriateness. Mr. Uh Warren, Jim, the, you brought your sense of humor. Uh, I, I wonder if you have any thoughts at, at um, humor breaking down some of the barriers and how you've uh, utilized that. Uh, when you look at the board here that uh, I uh, shared with the committee, you can see that some of these things are quite ridiculous. How could they even be considered? Yet we don't have to imagine this ridiculous perspective. And I doubt that uh, the trademark uh, and patent commission would even allow these mascots these days to be uh, incorporated into organizations. Uh, to have the New York Jews or the San Francisco Chinamen or the Cleveland Asians or Cleveland Hispanics, Cleveland Africans is ridiculous. Yet Cleveland Indians is okay. So some of these things with the education, I mean, it's just so limited that people think it's appropriate to have this symbol with comparative with all these other symbols. Uh, the only thing I can see is they're all similar and they must have the same dentist. I would uh, venture to say that I'm the first Oglala Lakota tribal member that's a member of the NFL alumni that has been in this room. So I have therefore discovered you. Our kids go to school and they cut out paper feathers and pilgrim hats and suddenly they have an Indian history. And the curriculum is something that needs to be changed. We need to say that we did not experience help when Columbus was lost in the Caribbean in 1492. And uh, as a result of his European contact, if you will, over 90% of us perished in a 400-year conflict. Over 90% of us perished as a result of Columbus arriving in the Caribbean at the time. Here we are today discussing these issues when other cultures in the United States had, that have come over have gotten this respect. We ask for that equality. I don't see anybody from other communities protesting that they're not mascots. Why don't we have the black skins, white skins, brown skins, and yellow skins included? And I dare say that none of them want to be. This imagery allows for ignorance in American society. And again, we must educate and truly address the issues that happen here in America. And we're asking for your support to uh, influence your peers, the voting public, to hopefully see us in a different light, but more importantly, see that this is inappropriate and that we would never allow this with other cultures. And the seventh generation is here. Black Elk, after the Wounded Knee Massacre, said it would take seven generations to heal the circle. And those are the youth of today. And they're going to be great leaders someday. And I'm a firm believer that one of those from that generation will be president of this United States. So that's my dream. Thank you. Thank you, and I think that's a, um, a very appropriate way to close.